Today, I feel we are underestimating the importance of our involvement in the making and the production of goods. The relationship we have between the amount of work we put in the making and the satisfaction we get out is deteriorating. And because of the wealth of the commodities we acquired, we hardly have to invest time or effort to get what we want. We are getting careless on how much stuff we're producing, leading us to buy because we feel we have to buy. And after all, it's here, it's cheap, so why not? And when it becomes useless, broke, or we just forget about it, we buy another one to replace the old one. Because first, we don't really know what to do with it, and second, because it's easy. And we are constantly searching for ways to improve our life and make things easier. But we forget that the things we work the hardest for effectively are the things we remember the best and appreciate the most. And so today, we are living in the age of 3D printing, which is a pretty cool technology. This is going to change everything. They are calling it the fourth industrial revolution. This is going to change the way we make things forever. But even more, this is going to change the way we feel about making things, for the better or for the worse. And that's where my battle begins. So 3D printing allows us to search for whatever we want on the internet and just print it. Whether it is plastic, metal, concrete, food, even human tissue, the opportunities are endless. And that's a beautiful thing. But since it is effortless to 3D print an object, are we becoming lazy and careless? I feel we know too little about how things are actually made and how much energy it takes to make them. And why and while we let the machine do more and more work for us today, then what will our role in the future be if we keep on widening the gap between human and technology? And so I created this installation, and I would like to show you a little movie we made about it. So I was curious to discover how much physical effort had to be put to 3D print an object. To really make the machine depends on me, and not the other way around. I wanted to find out that if I have to struggle to get what I want, will the result will be more meaningful to me? And so I designed and built this installation myself, which is a very simple concept. The energy created by cycling is converted into electricity. It is then transformed and stabilized and finally stored in a battery. And this same battery powers the printer. So, so far it sounds easy, right? Well, it is definitely not. And it is not because the battery is capable of sustaining only two minutes of battery of energy for the printer, then everything turns off. This means, and here it's become interesting, is that you have to keep cycling as long as the machine has to print. And I can tell you from my own experience, 3D printing then becomes pretty hard. <laughs> and this system is not new at all. During the Second World War, soldiers used the exact same method to light up a light bulb. And you better believe that this light was precious to them because they knew that it wasn't just given, and because they knew that someone has to work physically for it. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we all should go back to that, but I'm saying that we should remember that while things may not have a price, they still have a cost. And so, did this concept improve my relationship with my product? Before I started to print, I really put a lot of thinking in what I wanted to produce. I wanted something to remember. And so I created this trophy, and this little piece of plastic here, guys, well, I almost died making it, so you better believe that I'm taking it to the grave. And so. So using a 3D printing for this installation had a precise purpose. We are today on the first step of what 3D printing can be. We know and we control what it is today, but we have no idea what it will be in 50 years. We even have no idea what it will be in five years. And this situation, 
looks like back in the 40s, 50s, when plastics started to build a new look and a new world for our society. Plastic was the solution for everything. In addition of an illusion of unlimited resources. And everything became plastic. Toys, appliance, bottle, food, furniture, car. It was easy to make, easy to use, easy to break, and really, really easy to throw away. There were no warning regarding the consequences of those use, and we just can't get rid of them. It's polluting everywhere, and we all know it. So today, we are standing on the possibility to choose wisely how we can make the best out of 3D printing. And here are a couple of facts to look at. So according to the European Union, the average amount of waste generated per European inhabitant is more than 5,000 kilos a year, which actually 3,000 is actually plastic. And according to the World Bank, by 2100, we will produce three times more waste than what we're producing now. And according to the time, the 3D printing industry is planning to grow 31% annually for the next few years. So maybe, maybe we should try to slow down the world waste production by first changing the way consumers relate to what they are consuming. And here's a good start for thinking. Next time you're facing the choice, ask yourself, what do I need and what do I really want? Try to use 3D printing consciously because at the end, we don't need much. We just want everything. Thank you. <laughs>